In the name of God, the most compassionate, the most merciful, I would like to welcome you all. I would like to welcome you to this lecture that is organized by the Arab Center for Research and Policy Studies in cooperation with the, the Doha Institute for Graduate Studies. This is going to be about the Renaissance Dam challenges and potential solutions. Uh, this is a timely moment to talk about this crisis that uh, threatens, uh, as we have seen in the last two days, uh, if it, of course, uh, uh, continues to develop, this can uh, lead to one of the most dangerous crises uh, that uh, threaten the Horn of Africa region and the region of the Nile River. So this is a timely moment to discuss this particular topic, and there is no better speaker than our guest today, Her Excellency, Dr. Maryam Asadiq Al Mahdi, and this is uh, our guest today, the guest of the Doha Institute for Graduate Studies and the Arab Center for Research and Policy Studies. So, please allow me to give a brief summary about Her Excellency, the Minister, who is going to talk about the Renaissance Dam challenges and potential potential solutions. So Her Excellency is the Sudanese Minister of Foreign Affairs since February 2021, and she is the head of the Ummah political party, and also she has been part of the office since the year 2000. She has held a number of positions in that political party. The head of the development of women sector and the head of the media committee and also the head of the communication directorate in charge of international communication with the CSOs in 2003 to 2011. So we have a long list of the different positions that have been held by Her Excellency Dr. Maria Masadiq Al Mahdi, but I've just picked some of her posts and positions that she had held from the CV of Her Excellency. So I would like to welcome her once again and give her the floor to talk about the Renaissance Dam, the challenges of the uh, Nile River Basin countries. And after that, we're going to move to the Q&A session and the discussion. Thank you very much, Doctor. In the name of God, the most merciful, the most compassionate, uh, and may all praise be to Allah, the Lord of the universe, and may his blessings be upon his messenger. Allah Almighty has taught us the importance of water as a source of life, and so did his messenger. I think this uh, lecture will be very important, first because it's being delivered here uh, uh, the premises of one of the most important uh, institutes here in the state of Qatar. And we, in this world, in fact, have a problem in dealing with the issues facing us because we are not always familiar with all the details, alternatives available. More often than not, we act uh, angrily and uh, although our prophet has uh, uh, advised us not to make anger a way of thinking for us uh, and because anger after all will consume us and paralyze our thinking and then we will give in into a conspiracy theory kind of attitude uh, then time will pass uh, without much uh, s much uh, good being done. In fact, it's much better to study, to take time for deliberate consideration, to plan, to uh, try to forecast and project what the future holds for us. 
our area has always been important for many reasons, not least because of the abundance of resources. So therefore, planning how to utilize these resources is of the utmost importance because after all, the planet Earth, uh, with all its uh, resources, which are by nature uh, very limited and depletable, and this is even without uh, the impact of the climatic changes. These uh, resources uh, are something essential for our lives, all of us, and uh, uh, enough said about the importance uh, of being here today with you and to discuss uh, an important resource that uh, no one can exist without. It's almost common knowledge that uh, uh, conflicts over water sources, especially uh, rivers which transcend the national borders. Uh, it's a well-known fact. Uh, there are success stories is also another well-known fact, but uh, at the same time, there are far too many conflicts, whether we're talking about Asia, North, Af North America, parts of uh, Latin America and the Balkans, um, different parts uh, of uh, Africa. There are well-known plans now by countries who are planning to build dams or rivers which transcend their national borders. This, of course, uh, one of the factors in uh, increasing the potential of conflict and uh, strife between countries. We in the, our, uh, in the Arab world are directly impacted by this and uh, we ought to really pay more attention because the whole world is moving in this uh, uh, direction. Something which I need to say about the Renaissance Dam, this is one of the biggest dams, uh, electricity producing dams in Africa. Uh, this was not thought of recently. It's been uh, in the pipelines uh, for many, many years, in fact, from last century. Although direct work, construction work started in 2011 and with uh, a lot of uh, help and synergies between Sudan and Ethiopia, not because the Sudan believes in Ethiopia's right to invest in its own water uh, sources. And uh, because of what we know about uh, the possible advantages that uh, can benefit the Sudan to not only Ethiopia, and right from the start, from a point of view of financial help, logistical help, technical help, we provided them, the Sudanese uh, engineers provided technical support. We supported them politically and diplomatically. Uh, our sisterly country, Egypt, uh, had uh, th their reservations, of course, for well-known reasons, but we tried to mediate between our two neighbors, our northern and eastern numbers, because with both of them, we have joint interests and strategic relations and social and economic uh, ties. We managed in the end uh, to sign a declaration of principles in 2015. This uh, agreement uh, really was based on international law and maybe you are familiar that uh, managing uh, water resources are well founded in international law and they have been formulated in a convention by the United Nations in 1997. We are not signatory to it, neither are Egypt or Ethiopia, but uh, this is considered uh, 
as part and parcel of uh, the international norms, and you know how important uh, that is. There are four basic principles that uh, the Declaration of Principles was based on in 2015, like the fair usage of uh, water for all the countries sharing the River Nile, and uh, we're talking about the eastern basin of the Nile, the Blue Nile, which uh, starts uh, flowing from uh, Ethiopia. The second uh, pillar is not to cause damage to other countries, and thirdly, to exchange uh, information on operating and filling the dam. And finally, the final uh, pillar is to all disputes should be settled peacefully. We have uh, followed uh, on three levels that first there should be direct negotiations and this has been happening since 2015 right to the end of 2019. The second uh, uh, aspect of this is to employ the principle of facilitation and mediation. And this has happened for the first time at the behest of Egypt and with the agreement of the two other countries. And the Trump administration did that in the period between November 2019 until the beginning of 2020 when Ethiopia stopped that track due to internal factors and elections. And the important thing here is that most of the technical issues uh, were settled in that period, although a binding agreement was not uh, signed. Uh, people used to uh, speak uh, easily with, uh, about uh, uh, accomplishing over 90% of the outstanding issues. This is true, but the remaining 10% or 5% are of the utmost importance, and they cannot be discussed simply by stating facts and figures. The important thing here was the direct uh, meeting by the heads of state, which took place on more than one occasion. Then finally, when negotiations uh, uh, almost stopped when uh, Ethiopia stopped taking part uh, and uh, after the initiative by the Sudanese Prime Minister Dr. Abdullah Hamdok in, in early 2020 and the response from other countries, we reached what we call the Augmented Committee. The Augmented uh, Committee for the first time named three international, ex the, each of the three countries uh, named a number of experts. We in the Sudan, we named the European Union, Egypt uh, named the United States of America, Ethiopia uh, named South Africa. This uh, was followed almost immediately by the president of the South, South Africa, who was president of the African Union, uh, came up with a proposal of uh, facilitating negotiations and, and therefore she started a mediation effort, a permanent mediation effort, which started in July 2020. The African mediation exerted a lot of effort, which we all appreciated. But uh, uh, according to Mr. Musa Faki, there was not a, uh, a kind of a well thought of uh, uh, plan for the, and was, uh, for the negotiations. And uh, in any event, we all agreed and the negotiations uh, lasted for 200 days, but uh, regrettably, we did not achieve anything. On the contrary, uh, we went backwards almost, and both Ethiopia and Egypt uh, retracted from previously taken positions. For this reason, we in the Sudan 
have declared uh, that we cannot uh, continue with this uh, effort. Although the mediators, the African me uh, mediators, have exerted a lot of effort, which we appreciate, and uh, through the work of independent uh, African experts, a report was provided after a period of careful consideration and study. Only Sudan agreed to the outcomes and conclusions. The other two countries, Egypt and Ethiopia, rejected this report. For this reason, Sudan, and right from the beginning of this year, we are taking the position that this is not a legal or technical problem. The problem lies in the lack of will, especially on the part of Ethiopia. They have no will whatsoever to reach any solution because the dam for them has become an aspect of political and popular mobilization for electioneering purposes and other political point scoring. And we know the conflict they had in the Tigray province and the result was uh, human suffering at a very large scale and Ethiopia now is suffering and its reputation is suffering. For this reason, the Renaissance Dam became a political matter and it requires a political will. The Sudan is agreeable to the mediation of the African Union, but we insist that that should be coupled with the European Union, the United States, and the U United Nations. In the last round of negotiations in Kinshasa, we, uh, there was a suggestion that observers from South Africa should attend, and we welcomed that. So therefore, this kind of mediation, which carries a lot of legal, political, and diplomatic weight, is what uh, the Sudan proposed, but unfortunately, Ethiopia rejected. The dangerous thing which tilted the balance uh, in a very noticeable way, we in Sudan, and as I said in the beginning of these remarks, that we realized the importance of the Renaissance Damp, and we said we will have benefits, which this is very well documented. We acknowledge that. First, the dam will protect us from floods and the Blue Nile, is almost like, acts like uh, a seasonal river, especially in the months of uh, July to September, because we don't have enough dams to keep our share, which was agreed on with Egypt since 1959 agreement. Egypt was agreed to have 57 billion cubic meters and the Sudan to have 18 billion cubic meters. Until now, we never managed to have our full share. Also, not only to protect us from uh, floods, but also to let the river flow in a way that uh, allows the Sudanese people to then benefit from it throughout the year. In addition to this, the importance of the Blue Nile does not uh, lie in the share of water that it pushes into the Nile proper, but 70% of irrigation projects, which are part and parcel of the strategic planning for the strategic uh, uh, food supplies, because Sudan is important strategically, not only for itself and the neighboring countries, but for the entire uh, Arab region, as was emphasized in the last uh, economic conference in Riyadh. So therefore, uh, uh, regulating the flow of uh, water is important, and the Renaissance dams provides us with that. This is in addition to electric power and also to, to raise the capacity for dams inside the, 
Sudan to produce electricity. The dam also uh, really causes pressure on our own dams because our, the closest dam is the Rosaris Dam in South Sudan, which is only 100 kilometers uh, away from the Nineses Dam. And our dam is uh, built of sand and, and it's very small. Uh, Rosaris is 7 billion, whereas the Nineses Dam is over 70 billion. So therefore, the operation of uh, Renaissance Dam is important uh, for the operation and safety of the Rosaris Dam. It was not calculated that despite uh, all the relations and the close relations between Sudan and Ethiopia, which was so close uh, after our uh, revolution, uh, the Prime Minister of Ethiopia was uh, one of the main mediators between our army and the revolutionary forces and how uh, strong relations, personal relations of the Ethiopian prime minister and the Sudanese leadership became apparent. So despite all that, we did not expect them to uh, really stab us in the back. And this is what happened last year. They did not share information with us. They did not uh, let us into their way of thinking, planning, timing, etc. The, and the, the understood uh, agreement was that uh, the filling of the dam would take place over a period of seven years but uh, in an exchange of letters between Ethiopian and Sudanese ministers of irrigation, the, Ethiop the Ethiopian uh, minister refused to share any information with the Sudanese, with the Sudanese counterpart of any information without the signing of a binding agreement. And Mr. Abiy Ahmed, did not even bother to inform his close friend, Mr. Hamdouk, to pick up the phone and put him in the loop. This happened last year, and it has definitely caused uh, very serious consequences uh, at the level of irrigation. And this cap this Khartoum, the capital of Sudan, went without water for many days. And politically, it had uh, caused a lot of criticism of our government for b its lack of ability to move with the times and provide for its own people. But uh, the most important aspect as a result of the filling of the dam was uh, the huge uh, earthquake that hit the bilateral relations between the Sudan and Ethiopia. So therefore, we decided uh, uh, that we'll not go ahead anymore without an assigned binding agreement. And from that point onwards, the Sudanese position has become one and the same and almost identical with the Egyptian position. And our Prime Minister, Dr. Hamdok, and his Egyptian counterpart, Dr. Madbouli, thought it necessary to uh, coordinate between them at all levels, especially technical and legal and political levels. This is very important. It's true that in the content of any agreement, there can be differences uh, over details. But uh, so far as the position of uh, the dam for both countries. Egypt is more protected because of the high dam, because the size of the high dam is two and a half times the size of the Renaissance. And it's far away, it's over a thousand kilometers away from the Renaissance dam. But the difference remains over the periods of drought and the lack of uh, Rain. Ethiopia is concerned with how to protect its own right to, and its own future uh, 
plans uh, and projects. Uh, the Sudan, as I said, is concerned with how to reach an agreement over filling the dump and the operations of the dump, uh, even uh, in the long run, because without this, the Sudan cannot plan, and Sudan now is embarking again on the international scene after our name was removed from the terrorism list and after the important achievements after the Paris conference about our national debt, etc. We are aiming to become not only a regional but a global economic force. One of the important uh, uh, facilitators of that will be the Sudan's uh, uh, agricultural capacity. We have over 2 million hectares and uh, we need water supplies and uh, by and large the Eastern Nile or the Blue Nile is our main source for that. So therefore, uh, it's impossible for us to really to let our guard down and do nothing and stand idle because this threatens the very livelihood of our people. For example, last week there is the, there is uh, uh, the story of uh, another dam, Takizi Dam, over the Setit River. They closed down that since November. Last week they informed us that within within three days that uh, they will open that uh, dam. And we had to use uh, public announcements uh, of uh, the media outlets to warn the people of leaving the river banks because uh, the in, f in fear of floods, sudden floods. floods. So therefore, what we're focusing on of the importance and the necessity of a binding agreement over operating and filling the dam is an important matter, not only from a legal point of view and international relations and commitments, and also because of the declaration of principles. And on top of that, it's a main pillar of uh, good neighborly relations. For this reason, we are continuing with our political and diplomatic pressures to protect uh, our rights using all uh, means at our disposal, disposal peacefully and diplomatically, and we refuse to be dragged into a uh, military confrontation And uh, you know the story about the Fashaga and the borders is an important uh, issue. It is separate from the Renaissance Dam, but uh, uh, the reality of the situation now is that they are closely linked now because Ethiopia is using both issues for political mobilization for purposes of the elections which will be held on the 21st of this month. In Fashaka, uh, Sudan, in Sudan, we have uh, borders, land borders with seven or eight countries. The only country with whom we have uh, borders which are clearly defined is Ethiopia. And according to the agreement signed in the past, uh, the, the Beni Shangol land where the dam is built on was given as a gift from the British Queen to the King of Ethiopia on the condition that uh, any projects uh, aimed at uh, changing the flow of water in the river, uh, the Blue uh, Nile River and the Tana Lake should be done with the prior agreement of the British government. But over the years, the Ethiopians started using the pretext that uh, when the marcation of the borders what took place in 1903, uh, had no authority in, in dealing with 
all of this. There is a well-known story uh, and studies about uh, the British major who was uh, assigned with the task of the demarcation of the borders. It's true that the Ethiopians uh, later on uh, softened their position when their relations with Sudan was going through uh, a period of calm, but uh, uh, three of the mountains which were supposed to have uh, gone to, uh, to the three were given to Ethiopia and two to the Sudan. So in 2022, 50 years uh, will 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 have completed uh, uh, 50 years, and it's known that international norms of 50 years pass, pass, and the countries do not uh, call or, or reclaim the land. Then it will go to the party that's been utilizing it. So Sudan and Ethiopia have entered into a number of confrontations. Uh, yes, uh, uh, the relations have uh, improved, uh, but it is known to many people that since 1995, uh, after the attempted coup that uh, failed uh, to assassinate the Egyptian president and uh, the uh, the fact that the military has left the area of Fashaga to go to the south, uh, so the Ethiopian presence has expanded uh, and the uh, farmers have been uh, supported by shifter militias. So this expansions, uh, so such expansion uh, was met by silence uh, from the part of the previous uh, regime when the Sudanese uh, military tried to retrieve and regain its positions after the peace agreement uh, there was a kind of a lack of interest from the central government because the role of ethiopia became very important in supporting the position of the uh, toppled uh, president uh, so this silence uh, uh, was uh, uh, met by a certain kind of uh, negligence by the part or from the part of the uh, Sudanese part. But yes, our relationship with the Ethiopians is good. But last year when Abiy Ahmed, the prime minister, asked the president of the Sudanese sovereignty, asked uh, for the uh, Sudanese military to stop and close the borders between the two countries. Uh, and uh, he was advised that uh, this is not going to solve the problem, but the military did its job and uh, closed uh, the Ethiopian-Sudanese borders, and not only the borders uh, uh, in the northern part of Sudan. So this is the duty of the Sudanese military for them to carry out such a duty. So our military is still in its positions. Uh, so uh, the positions that are uh, uh, seven kilometers away from our demarcated borders till date and we do not intend uh, to have any military operations uh, no uh, military confrontations with our brothers uh, in the east uh, but the military has to do its job to defend the borders so the situation has some tension particularly in recent time, but the Sudanese military was, and for the first time, to uh, protect its presence uh, by the establishment of uh, bridges uh, over the Sitit uh, uh, River. So there are uh, permanent uh, rivers uh, and uh, temporary rivers uh, uh, and this was uh, uh, through the support of our brothers uh, in Egypt, and we do appreciate their support. So we know the pressure that uh, Ethiopia is undertaking and uh, being subjected to. So Ethiopia has 115 million. This is the total population, and it is expected that Ethiopia will become uh, eighth 
in terms of the total population worldwide. Uh, so that is why it is important to have stability in Ethiopia, in uh, Central Africa, in Egypt, uh, in the continent, in the world at large. Uh, and when it comes to this particular matter, is uh, we are very, very open. We would like to have uh, uh, equations based on gain for all parties. Uh, so when it comes to uh, potential solutions, prospects of a solution, so... Uh, so the idea that they talked about cannot continue. It cannot be in the interest of Ethiopia, nor in the interest of Egypt or Sudan or the region at large. That is why uh, we see many, many capabilities when it comes to the Renaissance Dam. It can be a source of cooperation of yet another African success. Uh, so there are so many successful experiences when it comes to the management of Niger uh, dam, uh, uh, sorry, river, and also we have uh, uh, another experience uh, when it comes to the Senegal uh, River that is uh, also managed by many countries. Uh, such cooperation, such management is based uh, on uh, uh, a number of strong uh, factors, even uh, the countries such as uh, upstream countries. Uh, so the uh, withdrawal of the Guinea-Bissau uh, did not impact the cooperation that was taking place. So we say that this dam can be uh, a gateway for cooperation. So uh, Sudan has many, many fertile uh, lands uh, and uh, it can invest on those lands. It can be the region of food security, a possible food security for the whole region. Egypt also has uh, the know-how, the knowledge, uh, technological, agricultural knowledge. Ethiopia has manpower. Also, we have so many open borders and joint resources uh, and historical and strategic relations that we can lean on. And consequently, this is the prospect, uh, the possible prospect and the necessary prospect uh, that we should all try to achieve. Uh, we are open with regard to this matter. Yes, there are a number of initiatives uh, that have been established. We look at these initiatives with all positivity. So we are very positive vis-a-vis -vis these uh, initiatives, uh, but which we cannot uh, take the uh, sovereignty of Sudan uh, cannot be taken lightly. So that is why we, uh, we do not want uh, our uh, neighbors to impose any sedition or lead us to any sedition, nor do we want to have any sedition from our end uh, towards the other countries. We do not want to have any confrontation. We would like to have transformation in our relationship. We would like to have transparency, to have constructive ideas. Uh, uh, through uh, alternatives such as uh, wind energy, uh, solar energy, and uh, many, many other alternatives. Uh, that is why we see a very, very important role in the African Union and also the great support uh, that uh, Sudan was able to achieve uh, So any attempt uh, similar to the one that uh, Ethiopia entered to, to uh, these are obsolete attempts. Uh, so they were reflecting a certain kind of anger at uh, some period of time. So 80 percent of uh, Arabs are Africans and this is a very organic relationship. We have to reinforce this relationship and we have to limit uh, uh, such ideas uh, that have become obsolete. Uh, so uh, we, you have seen, of course, the statement that was uh, used by s statement vis-a-vis uh, -vis the decision that was undertaken by the Arab League, which was a wise uh, uh, decision. Uh, so we work wisely, patiently to uh, help uh, Ethiopia uh, uh, in order not to look only into matters that happen internally, but also to look into 
the prospects of relations with the neighboring countries, with Sudan, with Egypt, and also its relationship with the Arab League. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Maria Masadak Al Mahdi, for this uh, valuable uh, lecture. In it, you shed light on many aspects of the Renaissance damp issues, the challenges faced by the different parties to this crisis. Maybe I forgot to mention at the beginning. Uh, to thank, in fact, all our followers on social